ESPN Ultimate NASCAR 100 Defining Moments. Moment 100. In the 1979 Southeastern 500 at Bristol, rookie Dale Earnhardt outdueled Top Guns, Darrell Waltrip, and Bobby Allison to capture his first Cup Series race. Earnhardt comes across the line as the new leader. Ending the season with 11 top five finishes, Earnhardt won Rookie of the Year. Moment 99. In a classic barn burner featuring 11 caution flags, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kurt Busch left it all on the track in the 2005 Daytona 500. Jeff Gordon's going to win his third Daytona 500. Gordon earned his third Daytona victory only after surviving four lead changes in the last nine laps. Moment 98. Four years after their hotly contested finish at Bristol, Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt battled again in the closing laps of the 1999 Goodies 500. Here comes Earnhardt! He hits Labonte! The Intimidator's ninth and final win at Bristol created a tsunami of cheers and jeers. Moment 97. In only his sixth NASCAR event, Mario Andretti was one of two drivers on the lead lap to finish the 1967 Daytona 500. He won it with an average speed of 146.9 miles per hour, and that was the story at Daytona. Two years later, Andretti won the Indianapolis 500, becoming the first driver to capture both races. Moment 96, June 1959. 21-year-old Richard Petty drove his Oldsmobile convertible to what appeared to be his first career NASCAR victory. But when the second-place finisher lodged a protest contending there had been a mix-up in the lap count, the victory was taken away from Richard Petty and given to the protester, Lee Petty, his father. Moment 95. With a streak that began in 1981, Darrell Waltrip, after leading for 205 laps, won his seventh straight race at Bristol in 1984. And the checkered flag waves. Darrell Waltrip has won the Bud 500 at Bristol. Waltrip's feet tied Richard Petty for the most consecutive victories at a NASCAR track. Moment 94. The 1970 Daytona 500 was the first race to be covered live by NASCAR founder Big Bill Francis Motor Racing Network. Petty Blue ended up in the winner's circle after team driver Pete Hamilton posted his first NASCAR victory and added to the dominance of Petty Enterprises. Moment 93. In 2004 at Richmond, nine drivers were in striking distance for the final four bursts in the inaugural chase for the next Dell Cup. Here comes Jeremy Mayfield. He wins the Chevy Rock and Roll 400. Yeah! The dramatic victory vaulted Mayfield from 14th to 9th in the point standings and into position to compete for his first championship. Moment 92. After winning cup titles the two previous years, Kel Yarbrough was not to be denied the 1978 American 500 at Rockingham. Having led 376 of 492 laps, Yarbrough cruised to victory, clinching his third straight NASCAR season championship. No other driver has equaled the feat. Moment 91. With seven wins and 23 top 10 finishes in 1995, Jeff Gordon began the Napa 500 on the brink of his first season championship. Jeff Gordon wound up 32nd, but he is the champ. Gordon, at age 24, became the second youngest driver in NASCAR history to win the coveted cup. Moment 90. Willie T. Ribs was primed to become NASCAR's first African-American star when he was arrested for a driving violation in May 1978. For a replacement, car owner Will Cronkite turned to a young driver still looking to make it big. His name was Dale Earnhardt. A year later, Earnhardt and car owner Rod Osterlin teamed up to capture Rookie of the Year. Moment 89. With only three laps to go in the 1986 Miller 400 at Richmond, Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip collide. Oh, four cars there. Oh, who 
who's going to win the race? Where's Kyle Petty? The wreck opened the way for Kyle Petty to rally from half a lap back to become the first third-generation driver to win a Cup Series race. Moment 88. A year after losing the Daytona 500 by running out of gas with 39 laps to go, A.J. Foyt found redemption in 1972. The 14th annual Daytona 500 belongs to A.J. Foyt. Foyt set a blistering pace, leading for the final 120 laps to breeze into victory lane. Moment 87. After his number 24 team underwent changes, Jeff Gordon entered the 2001 season with something to prove. And Jeff Gordon has locked up the championship. Posting six victories and 18 top five finishes, Gordon joined Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt as the only drivers to win at least four series championships. Moment 86, Talladega, May 1993. Following a red flag due to rain, Ernie Irvin passed leader Dale Earnhardt on the last lap. They come through the trioval. Checkered is waving. Ernie Irvin wins, and Rusty spins and gets airborne. Rusty Wallace suffered a concussion and a broken wrist while Irvin held on to post his seventh career victory. Moment 85, June 1997. Just three years after Ernie Irvin's horrific crash at Michigan, he returned to the scene where the memory of the near-death experience was fresh. Gentlemen, start your engine. Irvin came out on top, posting his 15th and final career victory. Two years later in 1999, he crashed again at Michigan and retired soon after. Moment 84. February 23rd, 1958 wasn't just another day at the beach. It was the final race held on the Flying Mile, the historic Daytona beach course. Paul Goldsmith posted a wire-to-wire -wire victory and became the only man to post wins on the Daytona Beach road course with a motorcycle and a stock car. Moment 83. At the 1984 Daytona 500, Kel Yarber was poised for back-to-back -back Daytona wins. Only one man was in his way, Darrell Waltrip. The move he loves, here he comes up to the inside. After passing Waltrip on the final lap, Yarber joined Richard Petty as the only drivers with at least four Daytona victories. Moment 82, September 1965. Known as Gentleman Ned, North Carolina native Ned Jarrett clinched his second cup championship anchored by a runaway win in the Southern 500 at Darlington. Jarrett outpaced the field by 14 laps, the largest margin of victory in NASCAR history. Moment 81. With 11 laps remaining in the 1997 Daytona 500, there was a crash on the backstretch. On the restart, teammates Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and Ricky Craven ganged up on leader Bill Elliott. That allowed the 25-year-old Gordon to become the youngest ever Daytona 500 winner. 